Okay, uh, good morning. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sri Lanka Energy Managers Association for me to inv invite this uh, to deliver a lecture on, uh, on the annual session. So this time they have selected a very important, uh, timely important uh, topic with uh, the smart grid as a technology option for the energy transition. So the, I was asked to discuss about uh, uh, the, the how we can use the demand side management and the demand responses in the smart grid platform so that uh, I think uh, you, uh, there are a lot of uh, other resource persons who are talking about the smart grid and uh, uh, they are the technical and the other aspects. So that because of that, I'm not going to discuss about the, uh, the smart grid, but uh, what I'm touching is uh, the, how we can implement the demand side management as well as the demand responses in the smart grid platform, what are the requirement and what are the barriers and how we can get ready uh, with uh, uh, this type of option uh, with the uh, implementation of the smart grids even in Sri Lanka. So when you look at our, the power system operation, so the main thing is uh, the, now the electricity is considered as a basic commodity where the, all the people are demanding and also they have almost 100% uh, electrified uh, uh, areas or the, uh, the Sri Lanka is 100% electrified so that uh, the, the main thing is we need to have a stable and reliable power system. So if we want to achieve the stable and reliable power system, the one of one, the, the far most important thing is we have to manage the supply and demand balancing so that we need to have the, the supply demand balancing so that otherwise uh, the, there will be a uh, the frequency variation and that can lead to the unstable and unreliable power system. So when you look at the supply and the demand, uh, the balancing, so we have uh, one side, we have the supply, other side we have the demand, so that the supply side should be managed, so that we call as a supply side management, and the demand side management, so what we call as a demand side management or the DSM. So when you look at the supply side, we have the generation, transmission, and the distribution, and the demand side, we have the end user or the, uh, the energy utilization. So in the, the supply side, uh, basically in the generation, we have unit commitment and the economical dispatch. So we are the, the power plant operation and the, the generation will be managed by, or is managed by uh, the, that type of management option. And also in the transmission and distribution also, that, uh, the, that is also comes under the supply side, that is also managed by the, uh, basically uh, by looking at the stable uh, stability, so that uh, whether we have under frequency or the load shedding schemes, uh, those type of things. When you look at the demand side, then we have the end customer, so that the demand should be managed uh, depending on the situation, so then, then only we can have the uh, optimum uh, power system operation. So that uh, this is overall uh, how the power system is operated. So my target is mainly uh, the demand side management. But uh, before going into the demand side management, uh, let's look at uh, the, how our power system is operated, especially by looking at the Sri Lanka, because uh, all of us, uh, the, we know that uh, we have a very unique uh, demand curve in Sri Lanka. We, are, we have three peak uh, periods. Uh, we are the morning peak. Uh, day peak and the night peak. The morning peak is in the range of uh, 1,900 megawatt and the day peak is 2,200 megawatt, which is also reaching closer to the night peak value. And uh, the night peak is something like uh, 2,600 megawatt. But when you look at uh, the, how we are catering this one by our system control center, they have the merit order dispatch schedule so that uh, in the merit order, uh, they, they have the marginal cost, uh, the, some of the, the power plants, the marginal cost are even lower than five rupees per kilowatt hour. Whereas uh, there are certain power plants where their marginal cost are even uh, more than 60 uh, the rupees per kilowatt hour. That type of vast uh, the disparity is there in between the power plant. But uh, the, depending on the availability and depending on the, uh, their 
the load variation better. So there are different different power plants which are catering in the uh, different uh, time period. Basically, we have the base load power plant, but uh, when we look at the the peaking time, most of the intermediate peaking times are created by the combined cycle, uh, the power plant, and especially in the night peak period is catered by our hydro and the uh, gas turbine and the diesel turbine power plants, uh, which uh, most of the gas turbine and the diesel power plants are uh, are the plants uh, which are really expensive. Now, the, because of the, we have to run these really expensive power plants during the peak period, because uh, we have such kind of demand. So that now the, what we are looking at is the can't we the manage our demand such a way that we don't want to go for that type of really expensive power plant. This is where this demand side management as well as the demand response come into the picture because traditionally the, we have this type of uh, power system operation. And also the always we know that uh, there is a demand growth and with the demand growth, we have to have the, the capacity expansion, uh, both generation as well as the transmission and the distribution. So which will involve with the uh, huge amount of investment. So that uh, in order to optimally manage our power system, so the, there is an option where we can reduce the demand or by the demand side management, such a way that uh, the, we don't want to go for that type of really expensive uh, power plant operation and also the we can reduce the uh, the large investment uh, which are uh, the putting in generation as well as the transmission capacity. Now, when you look at uh, the the world, now world is changing. We know that uh, uh, most of the countries are now moving towards the renewable energy because uh, the, the the world is identified that there is a global warming which is uh, contributed by many. Uh, fossil fuel based uh, the power plant or uh, the, the power plant uh, power plants and because of that uh, they wanted to replace this uh, uh, the fossil fuel power plants by the renewable energy now when you look at the investment compared to the nowadays uh, the what is happening uh, all around the world there will be a huge investment uh, is expected from 2021 to 2050 because of this reason so that now the world is moving towards the more and more renewable energy, so that uh, the, the mostly those renewable energies are coming from the solar and wind, and also there are a certain amount of uh, biomass, uh, geothermal, and many other, other type of options. But out of that, you can see there is a huge uh, investment for the solar, so the, and uh, the offshore and onshore wind. At the same time, now the, the, there are a lot of investment opportunities for the, the network uh, expansion as well as the net, uh, improve the reliability of the network. This is where, that's why uh, even uh, the, the SLEMA selected this topic because the smart grid. Now the, the, the all of us want to make our grid smarter so that uh, the, we can even uh, absorb higher amount of renewable energy and we can manage the, our power system in reliable and the, the stable manner. Now, when you look at our the power system operation with the addition of these renewable energy, when you look at these renewable and new renewable energies like solar and wind, uh, we all know that we are intermittent and it's very difficult to uh, predict uh, uh, the, the forecast their generation. And because of that, uh, there, there will be an imbalance in the supply demand relationship. So that sometimes there will be a more generation than the demand sometimes. So there can be a situation where the demand is higher than the generation. So, but ultimately that will lead to imbalance. So now what we are looking at is, uh, can't we manage our demand such a way that depending on uh, uh, the situation, so we are the, we will go with the certain type of uh, the the following of the production so that uh, where we can reduce the imbalances. So this is where this demand side management and the uh, demand response uh, come in uh, into the picture. Now when you look at the traditionally, uh, the all of us know that uh, there are a lot of uh, demand side management options which already we are practicing in many locations and many countries. 
So some of them are like the Pippin, obviously, uh, during the peak time. As I explained, uh, we are operating more and more expensive power plants. And uh, the, uh, the, because of that, we want to reduce the peak demand so that, uh, that we can go with the peak clipping, valley filling, and the load shifting. We can shift the load in the peak period to a off-peak period. And also that we can have uh, the certain uh, flexible load shifting. Those type of things are there. Those are well known. Traditionally, we are practicing those type of things. And also the one other aspect that we have to consider is uh, always we know that uh, there is a population growth and the living standard increases in the people so that because of that, they are demanding more and more energy and the electricity. And because of that, uh, there is a load growth as well as at the same time, the, the people are getting more uh, the conscious on the energy efficiency and the energy conservation. And because of that, there are certain activities are happening so because of that, uh, there will be a certain uh, reduction in the, uh, the uh, power consumption as well. So that both of, all of them are there. Now, what we are looking at, those are the traditional way of uh, uh, the thinking and the operation. So where we can use in the demand side management so, or the managing our demand. Now, the, when you look at the nowadays, uh, what we are looking at is more advanced uh, the options we are uh, the, whether we can manage our demand such a way that uh, it will not create uh, the certain imbalance in the uh, supply demand relationship. So that if you have a certain amount of uh, generation, so that uh, now as shown here, you can see if our demand increases. So now obviously if the system operator need to switch on more power plants so that uh, the, that will create the uh, uh, increased demand. So now what, the, what we are looking at is rather than the, the switching, or, uh, switching on new power plant, can't we reduce this demand at this location such a way that uh, the system operator don't, don't want to uh, the, the dispatch new power plant so that we can manage with the existing power plant, whereas uh, the, the consumer or the customer will contribute to the power system operation by reducing their demand. So that, uh, that is what we call as a demand response because the, they are, they are uh, responding online, not the offline. Uh, as I said in the previous cases, most of the times we are working offline, but here they are working online. They are, uh, when it arrives, so then they reduce the demand and contribute to the, uh, the system operation. That is what we call as a demand responses where the customer has the opportunity to uh, take part with the uh, system operation. Now, when you look at this demand, uh, the, the responses, it is nothing other than the, uh, the demand side management option because it's a subsector of demand side management. The only thing is, as I said, so that is operating only if it is necessary. So that when you look at this demand, the responses, uh, they are, uh, the customer has the opportunity to play a significant role in the operation of the electric grid. So that he is also contributing to the operation of electric grid with uh, the, not only the, uh, the system operator. Now, when you look at this demand, uh, the, the responses, mainly we can categorize them into three categories. One is the manual, uh, the operation and the other one is a semi-automated or we can go with the fully automated. Manual operation uh, that is done with the human in intervention where the, we don't need much automation and uh, but the semi and fully automated this is where the smart grid comes in. So the when you become more and more smarter we can go with the, uh, the semi or even a fully automated type of demand responses where we can optimize the our system operation. Now, when you look at these demand responses, this is not a new new idea. So the, uh, the many countries are practicing this one, either as a, the full commercial level or even in the, the pilot level. Uh, the, now, one classic example is a Japan as shown here. So the, the Japan already committed for a one gigawatt of uh, demand response schemes. So we are the, they are in the commercial level. The, where the, uh, the demand of okay, 
the uh, the in, intensive uh, in, the certain uh, incentives are given to the customer to reduce their demand uh, during the the peak period so that that is operating uh, the uh, the successfully in japan japan not uh, not only that okay even if, when you go to australia australia already committed for a 600 megawatt of demand responses and the customers are uh, the getting benefit uh, by doing that one and also the utilities are also getting benefit by implementing this demand response schemes uh, in australia and uh, when you look at the singapore singapore is one of the uh, the leading country who implemented this demand responses uh, and uh, they basically uh, implemented or created certain kind of a sandbox uh, trail kind of uh, demand response scheme and uh, they are practicing it uh, from uh, uh, since uh, 2017 and also there are many other countries even when you go to us so the, at the moment as per the eia 2020 report so there are about uh, 28 uh, gigawatt of demand response uh, participation in usa and uh, when you go to even germany uh, or uk or many other european countries they have already implemented these demand responses in different schemes and uh, it is expected that as per this uh, the 2020 uh, IEA report, so they are expecting that there is a huge increase in the demand responses by uh, 2040. So compared to nowadays, it will be more like uh, there will be double the capacity in uh, 2040 compared to 2018. When you look at these demand responses, uh, now there are a lot of uh, different schemes. So the, those schemes we can subdivide into times uh, time based uh, or the price based scheme and the incentive based schemes when you look at the time base some of the the terminologies are you already familiar with like the, the time of day tariff and the critical peak pricing uh, peak day tariff pricing and the peak day rebate or the peak time rebate those type of uh, uh, the different schemes are there for the time base uh, the uh, demand response scheme and similarly there are some other countries are practicing incentive based uh, the schemes as well like a direct load control and interruptible uh, the curtailable loads uh, the ic uh, the loads uh, we call as ic loads and the emergency dr programming and capacity market programming likewise there are many different uh, uh, dr algorithms uh, the proposed by different uh, the researchers and the different agencies so that depending on the uh, the situation and depending on the available the resources uh, that we can implement uh, the these type of schemes uh, in anywhere now the even in sri lanka we did a small survey or a small study so the one of my the research group uh, did certain type of comparison out of those uh, different type of uh, dr scheme what will be the most suitable one this is just a preliminary the ranking of uh, those different uh, things where they are effectiveness and how much of uh, uh, the investment is needed. Likewise, we considered many parameters and ranked them. You can see all these uh, different type of uh, uh, the, the price base as well as incentive base schemes uh, categorized. And uh, the, we publish a paper based on those things and propose certain type of uh, the demand response architecture for the Sri Lanka. Yeah, which need to be discussed in detail, but I'm not going to touch uh, those things in this one. But uh, I want to highlight that, okay, all these different schemes are there as a potential schemes, which we have to decide uh, which should be the best option for Sri Lanka if you are planning to go for a demand responses in Sri Lanka. Now, even uh, when you look at uh, the, uh, if we are planning to implement demand responses in Sri Lanka, so we have to first look at the, the who can participate these demand responses. So when you look at that one, so this can, the, we can get involved even the residential customers or the SME and the buildings as well as the industrial customers as well. All of them can uh, the participate because when you look at even uh, the residential, the, there are a lot of uh, the hot uh, water systems, washing machines, air conditioners, which they can easily participate for the demand responses and even for the SME and the building sector uh, since they have many flexible loads like uh, the air conditioning ventilation cold storage those type of things can uh, if they have those type of loads 
then again they can also participate for the demand responses and also the 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 the, the large industries like steel and the paper those type of uh, the industries can also participate uh, the since they have very big compressors pumps boilers those type of uh, machineries where they can schedule uh, the operation and they can participate for the demand responses as well now when you look at these demand responses now traditionally we know that uh, when you look at the supply demand the, the matching or the balancing is done by the the power system operator or what uh, in sri lanka we have a system control center they are the one who look at uh, what will be the the demand for the next uh, the, the 15 minutes or 30 minutes period depending on that they advise the power plant to be ready and uh, generate their power accordingly so now when we want to implement uh, the demand responses especially uh, automatic demand responses uh, or fully automated type of demand responses then there will be a additional entity what we call as a, uh, the adr system operator automatic demand response system operator he is the one who is taking the signal from the system control the, uh, the system operator and then ask the individual facility to uh, the switch off their or curtail their loads depending on the requirement so that they are the one who is deciding the optimum arrangement of the uh, the demand responses uh, they give the signal to the individual facilities and the facilities will curtail their loads uh, and uh, the the system operator or the demand response uh, operator will operate that entire uh, the arrangement or that the so that in this case you can see the other than the traditional power system operator there will be additional entities sometimes in some countries uh, that is called as a aggregator so that the aggregator is there where that will aggregate the set of loads and operate that set of load uh, depending on the requirement so when you look at that uh, operation there will be a decision making hierarchy so that the first thing is uh, that we have to decide uh, whether we want to go for a demand responses or not because of the, whether it is more economical to start a generator rather than uh, reducing the the demand or whether it is more economical to reduce the demand or the curtail demand than the uh, starting a new power plant so that that decision should be taken so that is the lower stage or the lowest level decision making then if you decide to go for a demand responses then the aggregator or the system operator should decide what is the most optimum uh, the the plan for the the demand responses and that should be in the, uh, informed to the facilities and the facility should work accordingly because there should be a certain contract between the facility and the demand operator or the system operator so that if they give a signal then the facility should uh, the the reduce their or curtail their demand and uh, the the participate for the demand responses so then uh, even in the facility level generally uh, because the system operator gives a signal to the facility in the facility level then there should be a equipment level uh, the load shading schemes as well that is for the facility so that the facility should have the automatic uh, the load shading scheme depending on that time period and uh, they are uh, availability and uh, those uh, the factors they have to uh, decide what is the facility level uh, the demand responses or facility level curtailing or the uh, the load shading schemes so that will be informed to the uh, the system operator as well after participating so that will be compensated uh, accordingly so with the uh, the predefined agreement so that is the normal operation that is proposed with the uh, demand responses how uh, in terms of the the sri lankan context we have to look at whether we are ready with this type of a system so the first thing is as i said uh, we have to ready with the the smart grids because in order to implement these type of demand responses of course uh, we have to have a very good smart grid with the uh, smart uh, the metering and the, uh, the communication and also the automated power system so that we are because the human intervention cannot be catered or cannot be done for this type of uh, the system because we have to go with the more automated type of power system and also the other than that those are the technical matters we have to first uh, the solve 
and also the there should be because as I said that there are residential and the SME and the buildings as well as the industrial consumers where they can participate. But in order to participate, we have to make aware of them and they, there should be acceptance from them so that we have to have a certain schemes and we have to find out the, the, what are the most uh, the, the beneficial scheme for them and also the, there should be a win-win situation so that uh, that should uh, help to the utility as well as the, the prosumers. Prosumers is basically now what we are having is not the, just a consumer. Uh, now most of the consumers are also producing. That's why I'm using the term called prosumers so that uh, in the future there will be more and more prosumers who will participate for these type of demand responses. And also the, there will be uh, the, the regulatory frameworks uh, need to be changed because now at the moment what we have is a, a vertically integrated power system where we have the, uh, the generation licenses, there will be number of generation licenses, they are selling the uh, electricity to the, uh, the transmission licensee and the transmission licensee sell it to the distribution licenses so that but it's a vertically integrated type of uh, the market structure. So now, as I said, because the transmission license is at the moment, uh, the, 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 the catering supply demand relationship. Now, if we want to implement this uh, automatic demand responses, there'll be additional entity that will come into the, uh, the, the ground. So that we call as an automatic demand response, uh, the system operator. So that uh, in order to facilitate that, we have to have a, uh, the good regulatory framework so that uh, the, this uh, then only, well, they can make a contract with the customer so that uh, the customer, then the customer or the consumer will participate for the demand responses. Otherwise, so with the current structure, there will be a difficulty of the implementing these type of demand responses so that uh, there should be certain changes to the regulatory framework as well. And also the market and the product design, because uh, as I said, if we want to get the best uh, the, out of these schemes, we have to minimize the, the system operation cost so that uh, there should be a, uh, the level playing field so that we have to have a, uh, the, the perfect market or the, the open market where the many consumers can come in and contribute to the demand responses. So, and also we have to develop certain pricing schemes uh, for those uh, type of uh, the, uh, the uh, implementation. So those should be done to implement these type of things so that technically as well as the other regulatory and the awareness activities should be done in advance if we want to uh, implement these demand responses in the smart grid environment. So that uh, there are a lot of uh, stakeholders uh, involving in this uh, type of activities so that uh, the, we have to develop uh, as a government or the utility, there should be a demand response, uh, the roadmap should be developed and we have to work on that. And then uh, we have to have a dialogue for the pol policy restructuring because as I said, uh, there will be new entities are coming in so that there will be a transaction can happen in between this new entity and the consumer so that, uh, that those structures should be developed and uh, the, the necessary revision should be done for our regulatory framework. And also that we have to find out certain research and development as well. So we have to collect data who will be the possible participant and what are their capacities. And uh, we have to aware them, so uh, the, the consumers, and also we have to do certain research on what will be the optimum prior, the ARD, ADR scheme. Uh, and also the what are the best uh, suited price scheme for uh, those type of implementation by considering the local content. And also that we need to have to support this type of uh, activity, there should be more and more forecasting model for both uh, the demand forecasting as well as the supply forecast, especially when we are working with the variable renewable energy, then we need to have a certain forecasting model to support this uh, the system operator as well as the uh, ADR operator as well. And also the, uh, we have to implement certain type of pilot budget at the moment, as I know, there are no any pilot budgets implemented uh, for at least to check whether, whether there are any technical difficulties or any other difficulties. So that uh, the, because of that in the roadmap, we have to plan for a certain pilot studies. 
So the, that's all what I want to cover in this one. Uh, we are the, basically, the, uh, the, I covered the, the, the demand responses and uh, what are, how we can implement in the, the smart grid technology so that uh, we can discuss these things in detail uh, the, during the discussion time. Thank you very much.